She is finally here, actually a little bit early. Yes, this is the Sigma 18 to 50 f 2.8 for Fujifilm. We're using it right now for this little intro. You know I like to test from the get-go. It's 18mm f 2.8 at the moment. How is she faring? Well, we're going to look at it up close and get some random test samples on the go. As usual, I'll have a little waffle about how I feel about this lens after giving it some proper thorough use. Yes, this is a release day video, but proper use will have taken place by the time we get to the summary. Anyway, afterwards, it will be over to you in the comments section below. So yeah, let's crack on. Let's check it out then. So this should be straightforward. We've got the instructions there, which has a bit of a spec, but one or two bits that I was looking for weren't there. We've got the usual range booklet, we're gonna call it now, and the egg carton. Obviously at this level, there's no funky case that Sigma are well known for. Is that right? Lens hood included. Petal shape, nice, decent, not a problem there. And the lens itself, really beautiful little dinky thing. Naturally, quite plasticky, but feels like it will take some abuse traveling around, although it's not weather sealed. But you know, everything, for me, first impressions especially, is all good. Now I've never touched the Sony or well, L-mount version, but apparently it's basically identical. Now snap cap, nice 55mm filthy thread there. Let's line this up and <laughs> there we go. It's all right that, not bad, 290 grams as is, no OIS. We've got a magnification ratio of 1 to 2.8 to 1 to 5 with a minimum focusing of 12.1 centimeters at 18 mil and 30 centimeters at 50, which could prove to be fun, especially coupled with the F2.8 aperture. Now it goes to F22. As you'll see, there's no aperture ring, which is a turn off for some, but you can still use it very easily on your Fujifilm bodies, especially using the front dial. In my case with my T4, my T3, not a bother at all. So don't let that put you off necessarily. Now there are 13 elements in 10 groups. Going by the other specs online, there's seven diaphragm blades in there too, but that's not in the included spec, just a bit about the groups and the elements. Now we're getting a focal length equivalent in full frame terms, I guess for us older shooters now, 27 to 75 mil, coupled with the 2.8, that is a very, very decent range, especially for something effectively pretty dinky, pretty small, more or less what I got into Fujifilm for, in part, in the first place. So, hmm. This is a very interesting one, especially as it comes in at £429, brand new. Let's see how we get on with it then. The lens balances relatively well on my T4 and my T3 and would be equally, let's say, well suited to the S10 or maybe a smaller body. Don't let the stated weight fool you though, it does feel pretty good quality. Yes, it's a shame that there's no aperture ring and it would be interesting if, you know, Sigma could look into 
employing a dual purpose control ring instead of just a manual focus ring so we can at least have some lens based aperture control that way now the zoom ring has a nice amount of strength to it and a nice smooth action and overall i'm happy with how the build and handling performs so thumbs up for that While it's not a deal breaker, it's nice to see the lens performs really well at both ends of the range when it comes to focus shift. As you should be able to make out in these clips, there is very minimal focus breathing for what it's worth to you. Focus on the creepy doll, back, creepy doll, back on the eye. Can you see much focus breathing? Now for some quick tests to give you an idea about the autofocus. Needless to say, it performs very well on my T4, for example. And as you saw in the intro clip and all the other random test samples, here's a little bit more for you. sharpness sharpness first thing that hit me was the sharpness is actually really good across the frame even wide open the lens renders colors pretty well and works well with the fujifilm sensor and its beautiful film simulations contrast is pretty decent too there's plenty of detail in the light mid and dark tones but let's just break from the loving for a quick test where the only change between frames is the aperture starting at f 2.8 of course and see if you see anything untoward Chromatic aberration is where the lens starts to show its weaknesses and sun stars aren't that special either. Not that there's that much sun this time of the year here in the UK. Anyway, there's a little vignette in wide open, but nothing too scary. Shooting up close isn't that amazing in fairness, but you can get some decent shots within reason. Finally, Bucket, it's, it's a touchy one. But honestly, I'm not that put off by the failings in image quality of this lens. So the big question is, is she worth it?
According to the press release, the lens will be on general sale on December the 2nd and will retail at £429 from all the usual places. And for me, that is a very good price point. Obviously, if you haven't got IBIS, you won't get the full experience, but it's still a quality all-rounder. Now, the nearest equivalent is the rather excellent XF18-55 to from Fujifilm that I've got right here. Now, this is 33% more expensive, doesn't have constant F2.8 aperture, but it does have OIS, an aperture ring, excellent IQ, and slightly more range. Now, somewhere around here is the Tamron 17 to 70 that I'm currently testing. It's almost twice the price, and there's obviously a bit of a size difference. <laughs> there you go. But you know, if you've got the budget and like larger lenses, it is a corker. But this new release from Sigma is a small, high quality lens at a very good price that might well suit your kit bag better. Interesting. What do we want Sigma to work on next? Well, let us know in the comments. And Sigma, if you're listening, you know what to do.